Oh, okay. No, <coughs> this one. Or this one right here. Is it Yeah. Oh. All right. <laughs> Excuse me. Can I start? Oh, okay. You know which one's for her? Yeah. You know which one's for her? Give a list. I'm on page one, number one, and I'm on page two, four from the We're on the record in various uh, tax sale cases, including 45 CO1, 1109, 115, 45 CO1, 1207, MI 118. This one is 1109. Mm -hmm. 115 concerning key number 45-14-24-100-002.000-013. Attorney Starks, you appear for whom? I appear for the tax sale purchase through U.S. Customs Bank for an Empire Tax Fund. And um, who is the objector? Uh, that would be uh, my office, Your Honor, appearing on behalf of uh, Mr. Nikolich. Um, I'm here for in lieu of James Driscoll. Attorney Bartholomew appears on behalf of uh, Nicholas Schmidlmark. Yes. All right. How much time do you need for discovery? We were discussing prior to the um, hearing, Your Honor, this morning, and I am going to have to be here on January 28th for another mm -hmm. hearing. I was wondering if we might be able to have a pre-trial mm -hmm. conference at for January 28th, and I would hope that we'd have discovery done by that point. I, I think that's reasonable, Your Honor. We've got discovery that's uh, probably going to be going out this week. I, I know she has a pending motion for summary judgment, but we just want to make sure we have enough time to get that back so we can respond to it. <coughs> is, there, um, is there a hearing set on the motion for summary judgment? There is not. It was only just filed last week. Okay. Filed this All right, morning. so you, you filed a motion for summary judgment this morning. Yes, Your Honor. Um, how much time do you contemplate responding in 30 days, or do you need an extension? We're, we're going to need an extension, Your Honor. Uh, because we're uncertain as far as the discovery goes, I, I know counsel has represented that uh, she's got some things that, that may answer all of our questions, and that's, that's great if they do. If they don't, it might take some time to, to get that back so that we can adequately respond to the motion. Um, I don't have a problem with the January 28th date as a pretrial conference. I, I would request, however, um, due to the pending discovery, that if we could get a, a date a little bit after that for the actual hearing on the motion, that would be uh, great. Well, we can, I'll be able to get in fairly quickly um, after that status for a hearing on the motion. Let's address how much time you need for discovery and then when you can get the briefing finished from both sides. I would think that um, I would anticipate since January 28th is fairly far out, um, we should be able to have discovery and briefing done by that point. Um, I guess in for the sake of caution, I would ask that if we want to make January 28th the discovery cutoff, maybe we can have an additional 30 days for briefing after that. Sounds reasonable. All right, we're going to... Uh, Set discovery cutoff at January 28, 2014. Uh, then, your brief, um, the response to the motion for summary judgment will be due on February 28, 2014. And you'll be granted an extension of time to file your designation of of evidence and your, your briefs. Thank you, Your um, <clears throat> The reply of the plaintiff or petitioner would be due March 21st. Is that sufficient time? Yes, that's sufficient, Your Honor. Um, and then when we come back on January 28th, um, we'll address setting it for hearing and see where we're at at that point in time. Um, and what time are you here right, on the 28th? I'm here at 9.30 that morning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So further status, January 28, 2014 at 9.30, and a briefing schedule 
in accordance with discovery also January 28th, and then we'll reassess and see where we are at that point in time and determine whether or not there can be a, a non-trial disposition. Let's see where we're going. Thank you, Your Honor. Anything else? No. Uh, Attorney Starks, do you have any other cases? Yes, I do. I have, um, it, it would be uh, second page, fourth from the bottom, Crestar Homes, LLC. Okay. And Attorney Starks, you're appearing for Crestar Homes? I am, a, yes. And is the objector here? Yes, Judge. Attorney Craig, yes. you're representing Rita Harris more? Yes. I think this was actually already heard as a status conference on October 16th. For some reason, when we filed the objection, it was immediately set for the status conference. It's already set for January 28th, so I don't think we need to do anything today. Okay. We're just already set, and we'll just keep progressing forward. Okay. Any other assistance you need from the court um, as far as discovery deadlines? Or We've already sent out discovery, so we'll just get, we'll get it back, and we'll go from there, and we'll be able to give you a better idea in January. Okay. All right. Well, then we'll set it for status January 28th, 2014 at 9.30. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Attorney Fandry. Uh, good morning, Your Honor. I'm uh, Carl Spackler, LLC. Yes. That's correct. Third from the bottom. On yes. page one. Yes. <clears throat> and you're appearing for Carl Spackler, LLC. No, I'm appearing for the uh, objector, uh, which is uh, Daniel and Donna Borla. Daniel, Daniel and Donna Borla. <coughs> and Attorney Megan Craig appears for? I appeared for another lien holder. Okay. Paycheck is not, the name isn't on here. Who is it? Uh, Paycheck is the last name. I can hold Jerry Paycheck, I believe. Okay. Mm -hmm. I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> I'll get you the spelling. How about that? <coughs> And is there anybody here representing the tax sale petitioner? I thought Mr. Polk was going to be here uh, this morning. Um, we have reached a, a settlement in the case. Oh, okay. And he actually prepared uh, in order to uh, dismiss the case. Okay. Um, it's a question. Do you have it? Yes, I have that. Okay. Is that? If it's dismissed, then that's fine. That's okay, so the parties report settlement? Yes. And you're tendering that? Yes. Okay. We still have a table up here? I can't see. Yes. Okay. And the settlement agreement, does it dispose of all the outstanding issues? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Um, we'll accept and approve the agreement. That's tendered. Thank you. Thank you. Attorney Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Um, so your first one appears to be... Attorney. Hold up. I'm sorry. Craig, actually, you were next on the list. Are you, are sorry, are you finished? I have, I have, no, I've got several, but as I told Bob earlier, he's an intellect, so I should call <coughs> him from him first, and then I'll go back to him. He is. <laughs> You're the beauty and the brain. Um... <laughs> Attorney Decker here on my first one, uh, Tom Vanderworth versus Jonathan and Melissa. And you represent Vanderworth? I represent Vanderworth, the tax deed petitioner. And Attorney Decker, you? Here for the objectants, uh, Jonathan and Melissa Peterson. All right. <clears throat> Where are we on this one? Um, counsel and I have agreed we to set this for a hearing about 60 days out to mm -hmm. give us a chance to try and negotiate and uh, for him to gather some information. We set it for a, a trial on about 60 days out. Mm. <clears throat> so you'll conduct your discovery and conclude it by January 28th, 2014? Okay. Or January 31st? January, yes. Let's say January 31st. Unless he brings something to my attention, I don't need to conduct any discovery. I'm pretty much ready to go on it. So. And as far as a trial would go, um, how much time are we looking at for a trial? Uh, maybe an hour. We'll Certainly no more than two. I, I don't think it would be more than an hour, but I know how these things go sometimes. So, what are what are the um, what do you expect the issues to be? Well, Your Honor, the objections really twofold. First is there's an objection to the form of the notice and the recipients of the notice. 
but I think the heart of the issue is the second matter regarding the motion to extend redemption period, which has to do with the fact that the property was is adjacent to a residence. It's a vacant lot adjacent to a residence. Uh, the lender was collecting an escrow for payment of taxes, but was only paying taxes on one of the two parcels. And so that would probably necessitate some uh, uh, d uh, evidence and testimony by my clients to that fact um, on, on that issue. So, February 27th, 2014, at 9.30. Any is that okay with your calendar? Yeah, that would be fine. Time, you say 9.30? Yes, sir. All right. That's, that's fine. Morning. Anything else you need to address on that one? No, no, you're not. <coughs> All right. Um, Attorney Golding, moving on then. Um, <coughs> top of page two, Lake County Trust 4673, Conrad Whitmore and Blake. And there's also, uh, I think, a duplicate of that down at the bottom of my group of cases, too. <coughs> Same parcel. Which, um, okay. Conrad Burt, Lake County Trust 4673. Do you see it down there? You don't have to be here. At least it appeared on my sheet. Maybe they got combined. Yeah, I see. There's there's two entries. Yeah. <coughs> Just bringing that to you. All right, who's the, who's the tax sale petitioner? Uh, tax sale petitioner is Conrad Whitmore and Blake. Okay, so the, the lower entry is more accurate. Yes. All right, so I'm going to scratch the one at the top. All right, so Attorney Golding, you appear for Conrad Whitmore and Blake? Yes, Your Honor. And where's Attorney Hall? I haven't seen him, Your Honor. I'll bring to the court's attention. He filed, he filed a CCS that said he was making a motion for change of judge and a proposed order. I never got a copy of an actual motion. I don't know what the grounds are for it. So I'm, I'm kind of lost here. He, he maybe thought the motion had just been granted as a matter of course. I don't know. Uh, for, for the record, I would object to the change of judge because I think a motion for change of judge has to be made within 30 days after the start of the tax, after the tax sale case has commenced. Because I was, I was told at least that Mr. Hall had appeared and objected to the tax sale um, when, the, when the original 2012 tax sale case was filed in August of 2012. So I think he should have filed a motion for change of judge at that time if he, if he wanted to change a judge, unless he has, you know, grounds, at least for an automatic change of judge, he would have needed to file that within 30 days after the case was commenced. At least that's my understanding. Are you, um, are you going to file a written response or are you going to rely on that? And I have filed a written response, okay. Your Honor. Then I'll just, I'll just go ahead and redo the file and rule on that. And the, the bailiff had uh, my filing with the proposed, my proposed orders denying the motion. He had it this, has it this morning, so. Okay. Do we want to set that for a further status, mm -hmm. please? Uh, whatever, you, whatever you'd like. What, what do you um, um, what do you do? My client wants a deed, but <laughs> you, you, you probably want a status date, so. Well, what's, I mean, uh, Attorney Hall's not here. I mean, you just want to set it for a bench trial? Or, I mean, what are yeah, the issues? Do, 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 do you need discovery? Do they need to, I mean, I, without him being here, I. This is also the one judge, I believe. Let me double check the key number. Answer your question, I don't think I need any discovery at this time, Your Honor. Unless he brings something to my attention that I need to discover. This is in your auction, Richard. But on most of these, I'm usually pretty much ready to go for a trial with the notices. Right. <clears throat> This is also the one judge, I believe. Did he not file a motion to add the attorney general as a party on this one? Yeah, I think he did. He filed a motion to add the attorney general and the county and uh, to to the as as uh, additional parties parties to this case. The county is already a party to the case. Um, which one are you? 
There was the one he did that on that Attorney Kovachkov was representing Joy, one of the parties. Joy Pleasant was the defendant on that one. Right. So this isn't that one. That's not that one. But he did it on this too, Your Honor. I think that's why there was the first entry on the on the, the docket for today showing Lake County Trust versus Conrad Whitmore and Blake because he was asking to add some additional parties. And I responded to that as well. Okay. So I would ask that you rule on both of those motions, the motion to change judge and the motion to to, to add additional parties based on the Well, is it he's supposed to be here? What were all his cases that were objected to set for? Does anybody know? Is he on this list anywhere? Let me see. I thought he had some. Set for 11? No, I don't see any. Maybe he didn't have any. All right, so you, you filed a response to that also? Yes, Your Honor. And what, what were the issues on that? He, is he, he claims that he's making some, some claims of unconstitutionality, I think, concerning the tax sale, and he wants to add the uh, state of Indiana and Lake County as additional defendants uh, based on his claim of unconstitutionality, I believe. That's my recollection of the motion. Unconstitutionality of what? Of the statute itself or of the... Of the tax sale statute, I believe. Okay, so what's your pleasure? What? Well, my client was directing me to ask for a tax deed, Your Honor. Well, I, I can't do that today because we're set for a status. Well, then I'd like a, uh, another status uh, so we can get Mr. Hall in here and get, get, get going on this. So, yeah. Well, this, you can do that or I can just set it for a bench trial. Well, I'll set it for a bench trial. Let's just do that um, and keep it moving. I guess in this... Um, I think a bench trial setting would motivate people to get things done. Are, are you going to be back in the next couple of weeks, or do you know if you? I think the next time I'm back is like on December fourth or December fifth. I know I've got something with uh, um, on the fourth and. Uh, Pretty sure I got something on the fifth with uh, Clyde Jones. Okay. That Robin Carruthers matter. <clears throat> oh, that's on the fourth. That's on the fourth. Then I think I've got. You know what? Why don't we set it for status there? And if we determine we can set it for bench trial, I'll get you in right away. Okay, status on December fourth. Yeah. And what time is that at? Two o'clock. And I'll try to rule on those motions in the meantime, but that won't cause you any delay in time. Sure. Because um, we'll be able to, you know, you'll get the same trial date today as you would then. All right. And then that way we can at least figure out where we're going. I need to give you a trial date, and then if these other parties are brought in, then it's going to delay it even further. And... Uh, if I may, Your Honor, Conrad Whitmore and Blake had um, one <clears throat> other set for today. Um, Is that the one right above it? Yeah, it's 4508092810002004. The auditors furnished me with some uh, some information about that matter. My client would like to review the information to see if, if he thinks it's accurate. Can we also set that for status on that date? December 4th, 2013 at 2. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, so then we're, uh, let's go back to the, the second entry, which is now the top of page 2, Oak Grove property, Daniel Walsh. And yeah, Mr. Walsh, I believe, is here. 
Attorney Golden appears for Oak Grove Property. Daniel Walsh appears self-represented. Is that right? Is that you? Where are we on this? I uh, discussed some of the issues with Mr. Walsh this morning, and um, I think I'd like to set it for uh, for trial and try to discuss this matter with him in the interim. Attorney Walsh? I mean, Mr. Walsh? Yeah, he was supposed to send me some dis uh, discovery on that. So Mr. I other people get a status hearing on that January 28th. That's what I'd like to do. Yes. Um, do you want to... What, what do you think? What needs to be exchanged? You're going to get in the notices. The notices, the title search, and uh, you know, basically what I introduce into evidence: the the 4.5, the 4.6, <coughs> the tax sales certificate, the title search, um, and the supporting certified mail documents. <coughs> the only concern I had, Your Honor, is is that this is a vacant building, and I believe there's a, a broken window in it. I'd like Mr. Walsh to be aware of that and perhaps take some steps to secure the building. <coughs> Are you intending to? Higher counsel? Yes. <clears throat> Have you taken any steps to do that? Um, I've discussed it. I haven't hired a counsel yet. Okay. Well, let's do this. Let's uh, so we, we, we keep it on track. We'll set discovery cutoff as January thirty first, two thousand fourteen, and we'll set it for bench trial. Um, for bench disposition. February 27th, 2014, at 9.30. And if you get an attorney in the meantime, somebody will have to appear, and if those dates don't work, they'll need to contact Attorney Golding and let the court know, and we'll figure something out. But we'll go ahead and set that the same day as you have the other one. Attorney Golding? Yes. Would it be sufficient time for both of them? Oh, I, I think so. I think so. <coughs> yeah. uh, next entry is Cleopatra Young Reeves. Is that your client? Yes. Okay. And then Sylvester Hobson. That's me, Judge. You're not. You're not Mr. Hobson. <laughs> not yet. By representing. I'm getting old, but I still recognize who you are. Attorney Lewis, you represent Mr. Hapson? Yes. All right. Gentlemen, where are we on this one? Well, I didn't, I didn't have had any discussions with anybody, Your Honor. My, cli my client's uh, intention, I spoke to her last week, her intention is to proceed forward with the, to, to seek a deed on this. And I just got involved uh, over the weekend, Judge, so. Attorney, then how much time do you think you need for discovery? Well, Probably into into clearly January because I'm just now trying to get up to speed on this. Sure. Um, uh, probably sixty days. January thirty first, two thousand fourteen. January thirty first. Yeah, that's is that good. sufficient time? That's good. Okay. No objection, Your Honor. And why don't we set it for bench trial on that February 27th, 2014 date at 9.30. And if, you know, if it turns out you get in discovery and that's not going to work, just let us know and we'll... 227 at 9.30. 14 at 9.30. I guess the understanding is, is that the court would have no objection if we needed to continue these bench trial dates. It's right. No, I'm not going to micromanage your case for it. I just want to try and keep them on track to try and get them resolved. Um, it seems as if these cases do resolve on their own as, as time kind of goes by. And it seems, I, I think that's a, an appropriate time frame. But if you get to that point um, where um, one of you needs more time, clearly I'll, I'll give more time to, to either one of you. Um, also, if it becomes apparent to you, especially you, Attorney Golding, um, that some of these are going to turn into multi-hour hearings. Because you know, we'll stack these up, and sometimes we'll come in, we'll have seven or eight of them, and we'll be able to dispose of seven or eight of them in an hour. And occasionally we'll, we'll have the six that go smoothly, and then we'll have the one that blows up. So if you anticipate, and if any of the other attorneys, you know, if we do it that way, if they anticipate 
at a later date when she conducts discovery that one of these is going to take longer, then let us know and we'll get it set on a different date. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because by the time you're getting ready to, to come in for trial on these, you should know the issues and based upon your experience in these, should know if one of them is going to sure. blow up and take a lot more time. I mean, a lot of these, if it's just a matter of notices and, and then, you know, we're looking at 10, 15 minutes. If there's other issues involved, then we know that usually goes on to an hour and a half to two hours. Yes. So we'll give you that date and work towards it, and if it needs to be changed, it, we can do that. Okay. Can you notice yeah. she's comfortable with that? I'm fine, John. Okay. All right. <laughs> John Dunnett, um, James and Debbie Pocock. It looks like there's two entries. Yeah, Jason Parcels here, Your Honor. Attorney Golding, you represent Dunnett? I do. And are you James Pocock? Yes. Pocock? Here's self-represented. <coughs> Attorney Golding, where are we on this? Well, I spoke to this gentleman on the, uh, the phone and... Um, it, it appears that the, uh, I can let him speak for himself, obviously, but it appears the issue is, is that he just doesn't have money to pay the taxes. So, um, and the redemption period has passed. So I'll, I'll let the gentleman address the court and see what he has to say. Yeah, I, I need an attorney, I guess. Have you, um, have you done anything to retain one? Have you talked to anybody? I talked to one, but uh, I need to. Uh, Talk to legal aid. I'm on disability. I heard that the disability we can get legal aid through disability. So I have to try to go through that those channels. I don't know dark. Excuse me. Um, are, are you going to uh, go meet with somebody at legal aid? Yeah. Very soon? Okay. What we'll do then is we'll set both of these matters um, for bench trial on February 27th, 2014 at 930 and give you a discovery cutoff of January 31st, 2014 <coughs> at 9th, uh, 2014. And you'll need to endeavor to get your attorney okay. engaged as soon as possible. Okay. Okay? February 27th. February 27th, 2014 at 930. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Tom White is the next entry versus Artemio Carino. And my, this is my client, Mr. White. He's the tax deed petitioner. Tom White pe appears with Attorney Golding. And I uh, will represent to the court that last week, late last week, a lady identifying herself as the respondent's wife called me seeking information, and I told, explained to her that her husband, since he had filed an objection, needed to be here today. For mine, because he appeared in person, I believe, at the prior hearing. Artemio Carina, Carini, Carino, fails to appear. Um, want to set it for that February 27th date or for trial, or do you want? What do you want to do? Well, if you're not inclined to issue the uh, the deed today, then well, it's a status conference, so I I don't default people. You know, at status. Well, could we, we, we maybe I need to change our form on that to. I mean, we're constantly trying to improve things, and maybe I should start putting on our form that if you fail to appear at the status, that you'll be defaulted and the deed will be entered. Well, Judge, could um, but until I do that, I, I hesitate sure. to do that because I've never done it. But I think that's probably a good idea. Well, we're, we're you know we're trying to do the best we can. These we're swamped with this with these types of cases. So. And I understand, I understand that the only concern I have here is, is my client informed me that he believes this is a vacant house, is it not? Uh, there, there was a for rent sign about three months ago 
And then it was about a month ago was taken down, so I, I don't, they might have rented it out. I guess my concern right, is. Well, how much time, what do you, you want me to give you a date in December? Well, could, could we do the December 5th to, to get, to set, reset it for status and, and advise him that he's not here for the status on the. On well, December? we just set it for bench trial December 4th at 2 o'clock. Okay. And put it on top of the other ones. Okay. December 4th at 2? Yes. Are you okay with that? Sure. Discovery to be completed. By November 30th, 2013, and bench trial December 4th. <clears throat> and somebody write down a note that we let's let's add that to our minutes that on when we set these for status, if either party fails to appear, they're subject to default. December 4th. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Twelve four thirteen at two o'clock PM. <coughs> Jody Riley, <coughs> Attorney Golding appears for Jody Riley. You want that Jesse Eddy? Yeah, I believe. I spoke to to this lady on the phone the other day, and I believe we have an agreement. Okay, I'll let her tell you. Hi. Who are you? I'm Yolanda. Yolanda Eddy appears, self represented. Uh, Ma'am, Attorney Golding uh, has represented that there's an agreement. Yes. Okay, do you know what and the agreement is? I need from today to December 4th. Okay, Attorney Golding, why don't you recite for the record the agreement so I can answer? Well, my, my understanding was is that she needed, she has some items of personal property stored in this house and needs through December 1st to uh, remove all those items from the house and she's, she's agreeable to withdrawing the objection to the tax deed. Ma'am, do you understand what that, what he just stated? No Okay. Um, what he stated was that um, your agreement is that you would like until December 1st, 2013, to have access to the property to remove any personal property that you have in there. Yes. Yes? Yes. And in addition to that, that you will be withdrawing your objection, which would allow the tax sale purchaser to then get a deed to the property. Yes. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. Are you in fact then withdrawing your objection? No. Okay. Um, then we got to start over. If you, um, if you withdraw your objection, then the property, the deed will be, the order will be issued um, ordering the clerk, I mean the auditor, to issue a deed to the property, which they, they will then do to the tax sale purchaser. At that point in time, you will be divested of any ownership in the property. In other words, you will, you will, you will lose the, the property. Yeah. I understand that part. Okay. And is that your agreement? Yeah. Okay. That you're going to be losing the property? Yeah. Okay. Are you asking the court to approve and adopt that agreement as the order of the court? Yes. And Attorney Golding, you have authority on behalf of your client to enter into that agreement? Oh, yes. All right. The court will uh, accept and approve the agreement of the parties. Attorney Golding, you will reduce that to writing. Okay. And file that with the court within 14 days? Yes. Anything else? No. Okay. All right. All right, Attorney Golden, do you have any more at 10? No, we are. Can you for the call? I had, I had submitted some motions. Um, and they weren't listed on the call today. Um, I, I had put on the CCS, unfortunately, that they were set for today at, at 10 o'clock. So, because uh, I, I didn't know that I was apparently too late to get them on the hearing today. So, I, I don't know how you want to handle that. Well, <coughs> what are they? I mean, the motions concerning tax sales surplus. Mr. Wiley has no objection. 
We have no object, Judge. He's, I got an email that he had sent to Court Reporter Patel as to get that. Is that this, that's, what, that's what these are, apparently. Is that correct? Were they, were they sent for today? I agree on, on the CCS. Did, uh, any, did anybody that might have an interest in objecting or making a claim towards the surplus get notice of the hearing? And I, I only sent notice to Mr. Wiley because these were all defaults. They were all people that failed to appear at the prior hearing. Okay. And we have no objection to, to the motions, John. <clears throat> all right, we'll show those granted. Have you uh, provided the form orders? The form orders are in the file, and I'll provide some minute sheets to uh, court reporter if I may approach. <laughs> yes. I think that's all I have today, Your Honor, unless there's something I'm missing on this. No, I, I think that covers everything that I have you down on. Attorney Craig, now that you know, I feel know what you're doing. I I'm sure I can. You can hold a candle, Mr. Goldie. Right? I, I can do two. I'm a woman. I can do two things at once. Let's not, so. let's not jump the gun. <laughs> um, your mother. Yes, exactly. Page one. Um, the, th I, the first first place I see your name appearing is the third item down for yes. entering LLC. Is that? Yes, Judge. Attorney Schuster appears on that, too. Yes. Um, who, who's who? I, I mean, I know who's who. <laughs> <laughs> we do look a lot alike. I can see the situation. I'm All right, you're going to And I represent the objector sent to your bank. Okay. As trustee of Trust 1865. All right. And I, I trust that um, you're able to settle it. Of course. He's well, gonna, she's going to drop her. He's going to get the property back. 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 He's going to get the they uh, already issued uh, for discovery. We responded to most of it. I guess the interrogatories will we'll, we'll get soon. But the production visions already been responded to. We've sent discovery to the petitioner. We still have discovery that needs to go to the auditor and the treasurer. I've talked with the auditor who's we're no anxiously. Accept, we're no longer accepting discovery requests. <laughs> <laughs> He's anxiously looking forward to those problems to me to have uh, responses within a shorter time period than normal. Um, so oh, well, so we're looking at, <laughs> what are we looking at another status date in 60 days or so? Or? I'd say probably, and then we'll see where the discovery comes, and that'll tell me a better idea as to what we're looking at for a trial, yeah. the length of a trial. Really January, yeah. Okay. I don't know. Um, are you still setting on the January 28th day? Yeah. Or no? um, you know, I'm not even sure. I can only look and see. So that wouldn't be good for what? me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm not sure where she came up with that with that date. I think that's because she was here. I think and that's what she says. Uh, I don't yeah. see her here in my book. But but we're going to say that Rita Harris Moore is set for that date. I, is that what I gave you? Yes, yeah, so you gave it before, but he's not going to be here that week, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, if we're going to just do a status and prefer to get it early in the month, I, I think uh, that we won't be too delayed. We need to go to trial on it. Well, you won't be too delayed. I'll be able to get you in fairly quickly. Um, <clears throat> yeah, let's go ahead and do that January 28th date then. You well, that won't be. I'm going to go on that whole week. Okay. I'm out, of, out of the country, actually. We can make decisions without him, though. He'll <laughs> <laughs> give us the approval to move forward. Attorney Wiley, what's, um, you're going to be here January 16th for, we have a full day bench trial um, with Mecca. I 
don't have that on my calendar, Judge. I have a pre trial conference that day in Hammond, actually. I, I'm sure what I've got, we've got a full day bench on January 15th and a full day bench on the 16th. The 15th, I probably am going to have to move. Are you talking about Jan January 15th uh -huh. and 16th? Yeah, I don't have either. You don't have those? That's that Park Road and Mecca. Tweedle is on one of them, and yeah, well, actually, I think he's on both of them. I don't have either one, Judge. Um, you have any idea what's going on? I mean, are those cases likely to. No. Okay. Is it with Hammond? I mean, uh, East Chicago? I don't know, it's the one where there's like 53 properties and it's been resolved down to one or two. Hagberg's in on the, one of them, I think on the Clark Road one. I don't remember that, John. Uh, January 15th at 11.30. Okay. That works, Attorney Wiley? Yes, Your Honor. For further status. Yes. All right. Now, is that <clears throat> for each of those three entries? I would say that's yes. That's, yeah. The three wintering LLCs. Yes. <coughs> All right. Yeah, the three. Yeah, the three. I guess out of the group of five. Yeah. Yeah. The, the three. Yes. <coughs> The bank ones, yeah. Right. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Which which one do you want to address next, then? We can just go down the list. <clears throat> Falcons Family Partnership. Melanie Wilson. That's me again, Judge. All right, Attorney Lewis. It's here on behalf of Melanie Wilson. No, 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 uh, the way around. Yeah, there you go. Okay. I'm here on behalf of Melanie Wilson <clears throat> and Yvonne Anderson. And uh, Attorney Lewis, you have Calkins Family Partnership? Yes. All right. Where are we on this particular case? Uh, we, when we filed the objection, this is uh, one where we filed a counterclaim for damages because the uh, property was um, entered and damages have already been, uh, have already incurred on the property. We've also sent out discovery to um, Mr. Lewis, who's responded to some of it, but there's still uh, some that's outstanding. We'll still need time to send discovery to the treasurer and the auditor, which we have not yet. Uh, right. Okay, so we're looking at probably 90 to 120 days for discovery, a little longer discovery time frame. Probably. And, and we filed a motion to dismiss the counterclaim, Judge. I don't know if the counsel has received it or the court received it. We filed it last week. Okay. Um, and uh, But I, I do anticipate... Uh, some discovery, uh, but we filed a motion to dismiss the counterclaim. Uh, we, we probably need to have an, an argument on that motion sometime down the road. Um, have you seen the motion to dismiss? I've, I've looked at it, yeah. Um, I think that there's questions about whether or not it should be stricken as for timing. I think that there's a motion to deport default that's already pending before you prior to his motion to dismiss because the answer to the counterclaim was already due and a motion for default would need to be taken up first as to whether or not um, it should be defaulted on the counterclaim for failing to answer. The motion to dismiss was filed after that time. And the motion to dismiss has something to do with the motion for default. So, uh, <clears throat> it, it's right, is there any discovery that either one of you need to do relative to those motions? Not relative to those motions, no. No. Okay, so we could set those motions for hearing. Yes. Give you a discovery cut off yes and give you a further status yes okay. how much time for discovery let's work from the longest back well the judge anticipated it when you talked about uh, uh, 90 to 120 days so in, in, end of end March that's fine that's good judge okay March 31st, 2014, for discovery. Do 
know what our pretrial dates are in January and April. <clears throat> we use an April twenty third. Twenty one. Yes, yes, Your Honor. Um, and then we need a hearing on the motion to dismiss and oh, well, all outstanding motions. December 4th at 1130. Probably a little, little bit more time than that, Judge. Um, for the motion to dismiss the motion for default? I mean, yes. I mean it's a straightforward argument, isn't it? Well, we got to do it. I could probably rule on it right now, but... I think we, we need to do a little bit more uh, research on, on uh, both motions. I, I immediately filed a motion to dismiss because of her motion to default. But I think we need a little bit more time to to research both issues before we have the argument. Additionally, I got a uh, I got a criminal criminal trial class. That's okay. That's fine. I'm just right. trying to get it resolved. So, I mean, I can set it for hearing at that status in April if you don't need to have it resolved by. I'd now. like to have it resolved before that. That's even 30 to save, and that's 30 days from today. The date that you gave us. So, any time in December that you have. Uh, Attorney Lewis, you tell me how much time do you need to prepare to well, in, in time, an outstanding motion? I have a criminal trial in Elkhart that's going to last about a week. It starts December the 9th. Okay. So, the latter part of December. Uh, we'll look at January then. Um, how much time do you anticipate um, it taking for the motion? Motions to be argued. Not long. No. Fifteen minutes each. No. Yeah. January sixteenth at nine thirty. That what day of the week is that? That's a Thursday. That's good, Judge. A hearing on all outstanding motions then will be January 16th, 2014 at 9.30. Okay. Anything else? I think that'll do it, Judge. <clears throat> all right. That's it. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Geraldo Contreras, is that your client, Attorney Craig? Yes, and I think uh, City Equities. City Equities is represented by? Robert Appears by. Robert Harper? Yes. All right, where are we on this one? Um, at this time, Judge, um, we just need to have it set for probably a pretrial. There's no discovery, really, that I, I will need to do. Um, as far as my clients are concerned, they want to proceed forward. I don't know if he has any defense um, that he's wanting to raise other than the fact that he would like a settlement, which I, I have not been authorized. 
to give it this time. Mr. Harper? Yes, I would like probably a trial date. We can go straight to trial if you want, Judge. Discovery then will be concluded by January 31st, 2014. And I'll give you a trial date of February 27th, 2014 at 10.30. 227.14 at 10.30. Thank you. Yes? Yes. All right. Very good. Thank you. 524 LLC versus Joan Lewandowski. Attorney Craig, you have? Joan Lewandowski. Okay. Attorney Gratz, you have 524 LLC. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Elucidate me on this particular matter. Discovery has been sent to Attorney Gratz. He's sent back, I think, the request for admissions, but the remaining portion I don't know if I've gotten to. She'll be issued shortly. And then we have the discovery that needs to go to the auditor, who has, again, promised and is excited about receiving discovery from our client. If we just want to set that for status at the same time as the ones we have with Attorney Schuster on the 15th. That's fine, Your Honor. The December date's good for me. It's a house. I really don't have a discovery. January 15th at 1130. That's good. 15th at 1130. Status. All right. And then, I'm sorry. Because Attorney Gratz is also on page 3. Let's get the 10 o'clock call done. We've just got two more entries, and that's Attorney Schuster's, the two winnering LLCs. Christine Kerr. There's a representative of Christine here. Attorney Schuster, you have a winnering LLC? Yes, I do. Ma'am, who are you? I'm Bonnie Kerr. Bonnie Kerr. Christine Kerr's mother. Come on up. Attorney Schuster, you have a winnering LLC? Yes, I do. Ma'am, who are you? I'm Bonnie Kerr. Bonnie Kerr. Christine Kerr's mother. Come on up. All right. Where do we stand on this one? There is, I guess, an ongoing point of resolve, but I think we're going to end up settling it. She's indicated this morning that they need additional time. I think they'll be able to resolve it in two weeks, maximum 30 days. And I guess if we just set it up for status shortly after that period, then it would be good. Just want to set it for status on that January 15, 2014, 1130? Yes, that's the earliest we got. We'll take it. Not too bad. All right. Next court date, January 15, 2014, 1130. Okay. If necessary. All right. Winnering LLC and Skyann Ensign. Attorney Schuster appears on behalf of Winnering LLC. Are you Skyann Ensign? Yes. Okay. Attorney Schuster, what can you tell me? Our request is just to get the matter set for trial. I know absolutely nothing. I have received one paper in the middle of July telling me that I had lost my home by the end of August. That's the only paper I've ever received anything about this issue. Anything. Do you have an attorney? No. Are you intending to hire an attorney? I can't afford it. You know, I was handed this property with debt. It was inherited from family members. So when I inherited it, there was already at least a good three or four years of tax debt on it already. And I have been 
I had gotten two separate lawyers to try and get the deed switched into my name and into my dad's name, and apparently he just didn't do his job. I don't know. How much time do you need for discovery, meaning getting any information that they may have and requesting any information that they may have regarding the issues? I mean, my biggest question is, when does he have, when does the property have to be vacated? Like, well, the property would be, if, if I mean, you're, you're objecting to it, correct? Um, what we're here today about is to discuss how long it's going to take to get prepared for a hearing regarding whether or not they'll get the property and then have that hearing. Okay. Um, at which point in time you need to come in and be prepared to address the court and tell the court why they would not be entitled to the property. Okay. Um, so that's what we're here about today is simply to set some deadlines, figure out where we're going. I'm also kind of curious to know if they purchased my other property as well, if they're the people who purchased the same property that's right next to the property we're discussing now. I have no way of knowing that. I have no way of knowing that as I stand here. No, okay. Well, when, when was that tax sale? That was over 10 years ago, and to my understanding, from one lawyer that I had spoke to, if I maintain the property for 7 to 10 years, it rightfully comes back to my family which I have been. That's why I was curious about that. I can tell you this entity didn't buy it 10 years ago. Okay. I was just curious that it was the same people trying to buy both properties. All right. Well, why don't we set discovery cut off at January 31st, 2014 and set it for bench trial on February 27th, 2014 at 1030. And February 27th at 1030. And in the meantime, I would see what you can do about getting legal representation because the issues involved in these cases are very complex. Yeah, it is. So I'm kind of... Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. All right. That appears to conclude the 10 o'clock call. Is anybody in the courtroom here today that believes they're on the 10 o'clock call? I was on a 9 o'clock call, but... There was no 9 o'clock call. That's what we said on my paper today at 9 o'clock. Are you here for a tax case or are you here for a family court case? Yeah. Why don't you approach and... I think I'm going to speak to you. Yeah, the paper that they wrote down was the same as the paper that they wrote down for me. It said 9 o'clock on the 4th of November. Michael, let me see what... On the 4th of what? November. Do you have that paperwork? It was just a little sticky. Do you have it in your hand? Oh, no, I have my paper. Yeah. Yeah, let me see. Oh, I'm sorry. I see what you're talking about there. That's the original one from the attorney. That's the tax sale notice. Yeah. How much is all that? It's a higher spouse. No. I can't find out who bought it. Who? It should be right on the notice. Let's see. It's not. I talked to the attorney. David Bross. And he's got to return my file. I called several times. 524 LLC was the buyer. It's right. Is that even set for today? What's your name, ma'am? Hiram Catania. Something Sprouse, I believe, Your Honor. Yeah, the property is Hiram Sprouse. Okay, well, you, yeah, you're set at 11, so. Okay. 11? Oh, they wrote 9. Okay, thank you very much. They'll call you. They wrote 10 on 9. Yeah. 10? Yeah. What's your name? Uh, Mr. Russell and Rachel Thomas. Do you know who the attorney is on the... For the, are you a buyer or, or a property owner? Uh, uh, we are a petitioner. Yes. Two again. Russell and Rachel Thomas. Uh -huh. I got the paper with that clause number. If you need that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you have an attorney? Oh, um, my call, call it shows that that's set at 1 30. 1 30, right? Okay, see. It says 10? Yeah. Okay. 
<laughs> well, I apologize. We um, we endeavor to make zero mistakes, but when we process 800 of these, and invariably somebody makes a mistake. <laughs> No problem. Come back. 1.30. Okay. All right. Sorry for the inconvenience. Yes, sir? William Baggett. What's your name? William Baggett. William Banks? Yeah, you're under 11 o'clock. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. All right. All right. All right. All right. So let's uh, move along to the 11 o'clock call. Um, which I believe the majority of those 11 o'clocks are pretty broad, correct? I believe so, yes, yeah. Why don't you step forward then? And let's start off with the, uh, the first entry, unexpected returns, Milda Cruz. Milda Cruz, is Milda Cruz here? So with Judge uh, Attorney Emerson called me and indicated to me that he was going to be in California today. Um, we're exploring the settlement possibilities. I believe this matter will be so. If we could just have a short date, I think we can resolve it by that December date if we can have a status or something that day. What December date? Um, I think you said the 5th or 4th, 5th, something like that. There's December 4th. There's nothing on the 5th. Um, I got a, in my book, I've got December 5th, I think. It's I got yeah, December 5th. Well, I know that's yeah. become a boondoggle, so I'm not putting anything else now. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> I have something at 11. Um, but, uh, I'm sorry, when? I have this December 5th at 11. What five, is it? Five two four and uh, responded as pure. What what is it for? I believe it was a status that was an objection. For whatever reason it got down as in my book it's December fifth. What time? Eleven. I don't have that file with me, but I can double check if that's that's maybe a bad time. Or um, no, it's fine. We'll we'll make it work. <laughs> I, I I honestly believe it'll be resolved, Judge. I think we'll just be uh, right. presenting documents to you. All right, time. December fifth, two thousand and thirteen, at eleven. These are the gift that keeps on giving on a monthly basis. <laughs> um, unexpected returns, Rita Maciel, Norma, Norma Maciel. I never got him. Maciel, is that you? Okay. Tony Bratz is here on behalf of unexpected returns. And are you Norma? Yeah, Rita just wants to go. Oh, okay. Um, well, we can recall you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Top Shot Investments, Betty and Leroy Harris. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Harris, is that you? Yes. All right. Betty and Leroy Harris self-represented attorney Bratz is here on behalf of Top Shot Investments. Yes, yes, Your Honor. Um, my client is authorized to extend a settlement offer to them. We're getting 30 days from today's date to redeem the property. If they redeem the property, the property is theirs. If they don't redeem the property, then my client is issued a tax. Have you discussed that with them? I haven't because I've, I've been attending other matters here and I wasn't quite sure if they were here or not. Do you know what the redemption amount is? We'll find out, Judge. Okay. Um, 
morning, Mr. and Mrs. Harris. Attorney Glass, on behalf of the tax sale purchaser, is making an offer to you. And the offer is that if you can redeem the property, in other words, pay the total amount that is outstanding for redemption within 30 days, then you would get the house and they would withdraw their petition for deed. I'm trying to get the amount for you so you know what that is. Is that offer something that you would be interested in? Yes. Now, you understand if you accept that and you don't make that payment within 30 days, then the order ordering the clerk to issue the deed would be issued without further court hearing. Okay. In other words, you're agreeing that... Okay. Okay. In other words, you're going to have an amount that you have to pay in 30 days. If you pay it, then you're done. If you don't pay it, then you're done. The bad way. May I ask a question? You absolutely may. Would that be the amount of the property taxes that have exceeded $3,000? I don't know. We're trying to ascertain what that amount would be so you know what the amount would be. I don't like any surprises. So the auditor's office is endeavoring right now to try and find out what that number is because I'd like for everybody to know what that is because I don't want you to agree to something and then it's $20,000. Right. And we don't want it to be that way either. Correct. We'd like to have to make some extensions in time so that we can know what that amount is. I don't want to agree on something that has to be paid within 30 days and then not knowing what it is and it being billed by hand. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I do. And that's why I'm doing it. I absolutely couldn't agree with you more that you need to know exactly what you're stepping into before you step into it. So we need to give them a list. Well, we're trying right now to figure out the number. Just give me the certificate. Would it be helpful if we just had them clearly call us? I've got the certificate in the shape. I believe she can get close to the figure working off of that. It's close to what Ms. Harris said. It's $3,186. Do you have a number? $3,186, Judge. $3,186. And is there any possible for us to get a little more time? Well, the court is not a party to the agreement. If that's something you would have to ask, is there a possibility that they could get a little more time? That's what I've been given, Your Honor. That gives the redemption period ended a month and a half ago. So this gives them another month. So they're given about three extra months grace period. That's the only authority I have for my client. I think their position is that they want to pursue the deed if this is not acceptable to them. So I have no authority to extend that past the 30 days. Okay. Today's hearing is a status hearing where the folks come in and I try and find out what's going on in the case, figure out what needs to be done to move it forward to an ultimate resolution. We have to take a short break here because our equipment apparently has ceased working and we have to have everything on the record. So we'll take a short recess.
So we'll try and reboot the system. And this is normally a good. This is normally a time where I, I ask everyone to just stare at Karen. Because if you do that, it works faster. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Harris, as I was explaining, um, today's hearing is a status hearing to figure out what needs to be done to try and move this case along and get it to a disposition. The court um, has no authority at this point to broker an agreement between the parties. That's up to you all. So all I can do is accept and approve an agreement that the parties might reach. So what their offer is today is... You would have until what day? December 4th, Judge. 2013. <clears throat> until December 4th, 2013, to pay $3,186. And if you do that, <clears throat> then the case is over and, and you keep the house. If you don't do it by that date, then there would be an order issued ordering that a deed be issued to the tax sale purchaser and you'd lose the house. So that's what their, their offer is. So you have two choices. One would be able to take would be to take that offer, or two, say no, and we would set this matter for a trial probably in February. At which time you'd have to come in and <clears throat> present evidence to the court to show why the court should not enter an order uh, or any be issued to them. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Mr. Harris? Yes. Okay. So, um, you're asking the court to approve and accept the agreement of the parties? Yes. Okay. Attorney Bratz, you are representing to the court that you have authority to enter into that yes. agreement on behalf of your client? I do, Your Honor. 
All right, the court will approve and accept, accept and approve the agreement of the parties. Um, Attorney Bratz, you'll... I have the order here, gentlemen. I'll leave it. All right, I'm just going to put file within seven days, which you already did, but just so the record's clear on that. <clears throat> and um, Ms. Scheidt, will you explain to them where they need to go? Sure. So there's no misunderstanding where they need to go and how they need to pay it and by what time of day, all that, so there's no misunderstanding. <clears throat> May seal back, Rita. I mean, <coughs> okay, you are Norma. Uh, what is it? Rita. Rito, not Rita. Rito. Attorney Rods. Yes, Your Honor. Um, Judge, we ask that that be set uh, for status. Um, I want to talk to my client. I want to discuss some options with them. Which date? Um, December. When do we do that? December fifth, uh, Judge. At eleven. You want that, or do you want that uh, January fifteenth date? I prefer December fifth. That way, we'll know. It'll keep it on the front burner and we'll get something. Right, 12, 5, 13, and 11. i got to talk to my client. If you want to okay. get around, I'll talk to you. Then, then December. December 5, just, 